So welcome to Digital Logic Design. Throughout this lecture, I'd like to request you to pause this video whenever you need it and keep pen and paper with you so that we can solve problems to consolidate our understanding. In this lecture, we'll learn to s we'll see some examples of digital logic circuit synthesis using NOT and and OR gates. So this lecture is built upon the uh, lecture three. So if you haven't watched it, please le watch lecture three first and then uh, try to solve the problems shown in this lecture. Okay, so please pause this video and try to solve these problems and then we'll match your answers. So please pause this video. Okay, so hopefully you've been able to solve this problem. So here it's saying that we need to implement this function using NAND and NOR gates and find the total cost. So here uh, we have the sum, uh, we have the min term in the indices, 2, 3, 4, 6, and 7, which means the 2, 3, 4, 6, and 7th row of the proof table uh, gives 1, and the other uh, rows are 0. So if you like, if you write the sum of product expression, so this is the sum of product expression, we just sum the min terms here and write the corresponding min terms. So obviously, if we directly implement this, this is going to be a very large circuit. So we apply Boolean algebra to reduce the size of the this expression. So we apply distributive property here so that we have x plus x naught. The same thing here. We have x2 plus x2 naught, so it gets it can be replaced with a 1, and we have a much uh, smaller expression to deal with. And we continue uh, doing this. We continue applying Boolean algebra until we arrive at an expression that can no longer be reduced by applying Boolean algebra. And that is our minimum cost of implementation. So if we draw this, so this is our SOP implementation. And then if we convert the circuit to NAND gates, uh, this is our NAND implementation. So in order to convert the uh, circuit uh, of that contains AND or NOT gates into a circuit that contains NAND or NOR gates, we apply a De Morgan's theorem as we discussed in the earlier lecture. So again, if you haven't watched that lecture, please w uh, watch it and then uh, try to solve the problems shown in this lecture. So, yep, so the NOT gate here is can be replaced with a shorted NAND gate. So you can verify it, you can pause the video and verify it that the shorted NAND gate uh, works exactly as a, no as a NOT gate. And a shorted NOR gate also exactly works as a NOT gate. So you can replace a NOT gate with a shorted NAND gate and you can also replace a NOT gate with a shorted NOR gate. So if both of the inputs are 0, then 0 and 0 is 0, but there is a bubble here which means it gets inverted. So if both of the in inputs are 0, the output is 1, and similarly if both of the inputs are 1, the output is 0. That's the function of NOT gate. Okay, let's see what the total cost is. So the, the total cost is the total number of gates plus the total number of inputs to gates. So the circuit has 1, 2, 3, 4 gates, and total number of inputs to gates is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So the total cost is 12 in this circuit. Okay, now please pause this video and try to solve this problem, and then we'll match our answers. So hopefully you've been able to solve this problem. Here with the multiplication capital N015 which means the zeroth row the function's output is 0 for the zeroth row for the oneth row and the fifth row and capital M is max term so uh, if we write the function in terms of the max term we get something like this M0 and M1 and N5 and if we spell out the max terms here we end up with this expression Again, we can directly implement this expression as a circuit, but this is going to be a large one, so we apply Boolean algebra to reduce the size of the of this expression. So here I've again applied 
uh, distributed property. As you can see, distributed property is is the most used property, and it's the most important property in my opinion. So here we take common x1 plus x2, and uh, it's basically x plus y plus x plus z, which by distributive uh, formula can be written as x plus y z, and we have x times x naught here, which is equal equal to zero. That that's why it, uh, this term vanishes, and so does this term. So we end up with a much simpler expression to deal with. Now, when do we stop doing this? So, see, we cannot ap apply uh, Boolean algebra here and still have a product of some expression. You can still apply distributed property in this term. x2 plus x1 times x2 plus x3 naught. So x plus y times x plus z. But if you do it, you end up with an expression, you end up with a sum of product expression, which will be something like x plus yz, which will be like x2 plus x1 x3 bar. But that's a sum of product expression, not a product of some expression. So in order to keep a product of some expression, uh, we uh, do not apply Boolean algebra any further. So we implement this circuit, and uh, this is the AND slash OR implementation. And if we apply De Morgan's theorem, we can obtain the NOR implementation here. So we need to remember one thing. If we, we are trying to synthesize the circuit using NAND gates only, it's better to do sum of product. And if we're trying to synthesize the circuit using NOR gates only, uh, we need to do product of sum. which will make things easier. So what is the cost of the circuit? So let's see, the number of gates is 1, 2, 3, 4, and total number of inputs to gates is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. The cost of the circuit is also 12. Okay, so we'll now see a couple of design examples where we'll try to design a circuit, a digital logic circuit, to serve a particular purpose. So there are two steps of uh, digital logic circuit design. That first we need to express the desired behavior of the circuit using a truth table. And the next step is just synthesizing the truth table which we've been doing so far. So uh, we're quite familiar with step two, but step one here is converting the question or problem in hand into a truth table. So Let's solve the design example problem. So here we have to here we have a large room with three doors and a switch near each door that controls a light. So it has to be possible to turn the light on or off by changing the state of any one of the switches. So we have three doors and so basically we have three switches here. And we have to be able to turn the light on or off uh, by any one of these switches. So if all the switches are open, the light is off. And what it's basically saying that when all these switches are open, the light is off. When at least one switch, so excuse me, so when w exactly one switch is closed, the light should be on, and when exactly two switches are closed, then the light should be off. And when all of the switches are closed, the, the light must be on. So if we express the state of the switches using three variables, x1, x2, and x3, we can form a truth table out of this uh, problem description. So again, you have three variables, which means two to the three rows into a table. So you have eight rows into a table starting from zero, zero, zero to one, 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 that is zero to seven. And when all the switches are, let's say ex uh, each of these variables equal to zero means the switch is o open and the variable equal to one means the switch is closed. So zero, zero, zero means when all the three switches are open. So 
f is basically the status of the light so let's say when f is equal to 0 the light is turned off and when f is equal to 1 the, the light is turned on so here in the first row the three switches are open which is why the when the three switches are open the light should be off when one of them is closed that is 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, or 1, 0, 0 for these the light should be turned off turned on so that's why the F is 1 here and here and here and when two of the switches are closed the light should be turned off so 0, 1, 1 here is 0 1, 0, 1 here is 0 and 1, 1, 0 here is also 0 and when all three switches are, are closed the light should be on so 1, 1, 1 output 1 now please pause the video and try to design the circuit using both sum of product and product of sum so please pause this video so hopefully you've been able to design the circuit so here we can see the sum of product expression so we take only the rows for which the function output is 1 which is why we are going to take min term 1, 2, 4 and 7 and we just sum them to obtain the sum of product expression now we I think you try to apply boolean algebra to reduce the size of the circuit and derive the minimum cost of orientation but as you can see you cannot apply you cannot reduce the size of the circuit anymore so we're not, we don't have anything to do here we have we have no alternatives, we have to design the circuit as it is so it's going to be a large one, so this is the implementation so let's compute the cost of the circuit so number of gates here is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 8 and number of inputs to gates is 4, 7, 10, 13, 16 and 19 which means the cost of the circuit is 27 so the cost of SOP implementation for three-way light control is 27 so this is the product of sum expression again I think we cannot apply boolean algebra and reduce the size of this expression and for POS implementation we we've taken the max terms corresponding to the rows for which the function output is 0 so we take this row and 0 this is m3 and 5 and m6 so this is the uh, POS implementation of the 3-way light control and let's also compute the cost of the circuit 4, 5, 8 and number of inputs to gate is 4, 7, 10, 13, 16, 19 same cost so POS and SOP for 3-way light, light control has the exact same cost okay now please pause this video and try to uh, solve this problem and then we'll match our answers So hopefully we've been able to solve this problem. Um, this equation is not valid, so we have fairly large expressions on both sides of the equation. So if we just simplify it as much as we can, we see that the simplified versions don't match here. So we say that since both sides don't match even after simplification, we say that the equation is invalid. okay now we're going to design a digital circuit element called a multiplexer we're going to discuss multiplexer in a later lecture but today we're going to use a multiplexer uh, design a multiplexer using not and or, or gates or nan nor gates so I'm going to first talk about how a multiplexer works so a multiplexer has uh, this multiplexer, for instance, is a 2 to 1 multiplexer, which has two data inputs. So x1 and x2 here are the data inputs of the multiplexer. And s here is the selector input of the multiplexer. And f here is the output. Now, all these variables are binary, which means f can take on two values, 0 or 1. So if we select s equals to 0, x1, the x1 input goes to the output and if we select s equal to 1 the x2 input goes to the output so 
the reason we call it a select re-input is because we are basically selecting one of the data inputs using the selector input. So the truth table of the multiplexer should look something like this. Here S, X1, and X2 are the inputs. And when S is equal to zero, the output basically is, is exactly equal to the X1. So compare the first four rows of X1 and first four rows of F. 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1. So when S is equal to zero, the output is exactly copying the X1 input or the zeroth input of the multiplexer. And when S is 1, the last four rows, in the, the output 0, 1, 0, 1 is exactly copying the X2 input, 0, 1, 0, 1 here. So please pause this video and try to design the circuit using not AND or OR gate. So hopefully you've been able to design the circuit. So this should look something like this. So this is the implementation of a 2 to 1 multiplexer using NOT AND or OR gate. Okay, here is another design problem. So please pause this video and try to solve this problem and then we'll match your answers. So here the input variables are the doors, two doors, and the belt, and the output is the alarm, F. So let's say D1 and D2 are the two doors, and these variables are equal to 1 when uh, both doors are open, like when one door is open. So D1 is 1 when door 1 is open, D2 is 1 when door 2 is open, and 0 otherwise. And the state of the belt can be expressed using another variable, B. So when B is equal to 1, the belt is fastened. When B is equal to 0, the uh, belt is unfastened. And F equal to 1 indicates the alarm goes off. And F equal to 0 then it indicates the alarm is turned off. So I've only written the uh, ones rows in the fruit table. The other rows are 0. So here it's saying that the alarm must ring if both doors are locked, but the seat belt is not fastened. So this is this row, 1, 1, and 0. So we ring an alarm here. And also the alarm has to ring if the belt is fastened, but at least one door is open. So 0, 0, 1 is 1, 0, 1, 1 is 1, and 1, 0, 1 is 1. And for the remaining conditions, we don't ring the alarm. So if we implement the circuit using SOP and POS, we end up with these two expressions. So hopefully with this example you have a clear idea how to design, uh, how to synthesize digital logic circuits using NOT AND OR and then NOR gates. So thank you for your time and let me know if you have any questions.